what is trust and why do we trust and why do we need to trust the Lord, right? So I want to do an, an, a little activity with my husband, all right? Okay, so here in front of me is a bag of water, right? Okay, and here in front of me is my husband. <laughs> Does he trust me? No, okay. You don't have to trust me, but trust the Lord. <laughs> trust God in me <laughs> that you'll be okay. All right, so trust is important to God. When we, the only reason that we can be calm when we're going through stuff is because we trust God, right? Because there's lots of reasons why the world tells us that we shouldn't be calm. We should be acting crazy. We should be neurotic. We should be taking this and drinking that. The world tells us all kinds of ways that we should be dealing with difficulties. But again, we are asked to trust God. And why do we trust him? Because he's what? Why do we trust him? He's reliable. Give me some words. Give me some ad adjectives. Dependable. Is that the adjectives? What is it? Descriptive words, right? <laughs> so the adjectives. All right, what else? Guys, give me some. Why do we trust God? It's dependable, reliable. Oh, what's some other words? Security. So we can trust him to give us security. It's very loud. Um, anything else? He's your light. You trust him with your life. He's faithful. Is he that? Is that true? Yes. Somebody that you trust, you trust them to be faithful. And God is all those things and more. Now, my husband just told me that he didn't trust me. And he had good reasons not to in terms of what, I, what, what I'm going to be doing with him. All right. Okay. So. Um, you can get a chair. That's fine. Because he's a little bit taller than me. Okay. <laughs> so here's his here's my question to you. I'm gonna okay. So and I'm gonna direct you guys as also So do you guys have faith in me that I will not spill this water on my husband's body? Be prepared. <laughs> be prepared to deal with the consequences. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I need to bring an extra shirt that you tell him. I don't know if you listen. <laughs> Do you trust me that I won't? No one trusts me. It's cold, it's cool. You'll you, you probably shake a little bit, but we won't be burned. <laughs> okay. Quinn, do you trust me that I will not kill?
didn't spill. You saw an experiment like this? Okay, he has knowledge. Good, that's good. So I want you to hold on to that. You have knowledge of this activity. So you knew it wasn't going to spill. But what if he didn't have knowledge? So I want to I take what he said. Give me a name one more time. I don't know why I forgot your name. Forgive me. I can't remember that. Sorry, Derek. I tell my students, I have a, I'm a teacher, so I have a lot of students over the years I've taught, and I always get their names mixed up. So I told a kid yesterday, I said, if I call you Jalen and you're Jada, forgive me. <laughs> I know I've, I've known so many J names. It's, it's, it's a lot. Trust me, over 20 years of teaching, you know, a lot of kids with the letter J. But anyway, so Derek, now the reason why he said he had knowledge, but isn't that the same thing with our knowledge of God? That we can trust him because we know he's what? He's faithful and he's dependable. So Derek was chilled. He was like, you're not going to spell. Because I know I've seen this before. It works. But for those of you who did not see this before, you probably thought I was going to spill the water on him, right? I haven't heard one person say that something wrong with the bag, right? And, and that's, that's what, that's, <laughs> that's really what the world, what the world tries to do to us as believers. The world tries to cast doubt on what God says in his words. All right? When you have an experience with God, you can be calm. Amen? When stuff happens because you have an experience that you can refer to and say, yeah, I remember that I went through that and God took me through it. So I'm going through this so God can do what? Take you through that too. Amen, young people? So don't think that anything is happening that God doesn't know. God knows the beginning from the end. He knows your life. You know, there's a scripture that says, for I know the thoughts and plans. Thank you, Quentin. You're good. For I know the thoughts and plans I have towards you, says the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Quentin. <laughs> and he trusts me that I wasn't lying. I said, Quentin, I practice. I got this. I won't spoil it on you. I told him. I just didn't do three pencils. I did two. But um, uh, there is a, there is a science, there's a scientific reason why. Uh, the bag is made of something called polymer. And whenever you pierce palm, as long, long as I completely pierce the back through to the other side, it then closed on itself. But if I move the pencils, it's going to spill. I can't move the pencil. It's going to spill out. Because the bag just closed on itself because the bag is made of polymer. And when you pierce it, it, it closes back up. That's, that's what I was told, okay? That's why it works. But once I move the pencils, it's going to spill out, okay? So God... God's word is reliable, it's dependable, we can trust it. And I love that Derek said, experience that we have will confirm that we can trust him because he's proven himself. The Bible is full of what? Experiences that people had. Amen? And so when you read, don't think about it as, okay, here's the book, the people call it the good book. All right? You limit yourself if you see the Bible as a good book. It's more than that. It's life lessons, amen? It's direction for life. It's, it tells you, it gives you experiences that others had so you can walk this journey out and walk it in confidence knowing that you can be calm, amen? You can be calm and you don't have to worry. I know where my phone is. Um, oh, Zoe has it, <laughs> okay. I'm looking for my, like I said, my PowerPoint is on here so I'm just referring to it, okay? Psalm 147, Bernard, if you could, Pastor Bernard, if you could go to um, slide, it has a scripture, it says Psalm 147. It says, Psalm 147 says, sing to the Lord with grateful noise, praise, sorry, make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky, there it is, he covers the sky with clouds, he supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. So God provides food for who? The ravens and the cattle. So are you better than ravens and cattle? Yeah. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of warriors. So the Lord is saying, I am not into, I, you don't need to be big and strong. And you don't need to be like Sister Nadia for me to use you, for me to value you. Amen? God values you young people just as you are. You don't need to be like anybody else, just be you and trust him, amen? He says, the Lord delights in those who fear him, hallelujah, who put their hope in his unfailing love. 
So God is saying to us, let's take this back. And trust me, I'm, I know it's going to spill if I don't watch it properly. But that's like we, again, had the experience that this won't fall apart. This won't spill because of the way the bag is designed. God has designed your life. And if you trust him, you won't fall apart. And young people, you won't be depressed. And you won't have to give in to peer pressure. Or you won't have to. You know, you know, so many young people are committing suicide because they feel like there is no hope. The Lord just says to you today that you can put your trust in him. You can put your hope in him. You can have the experience that these pencils and this water in the zip bag have that God can hold you together. Amen? That you can trust him with it. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So I wanted to, I don't want you guys sitting too long. But I wanted to just talk a little bit about a story that I, I read. And it's a story that some of the um, older young people will know. And I, I, I like this story for a lot of reasons. Because, again, remember, the Bible is about experiences and stories. I'm going to be asking you some questions at the end. We have an activity that we're going to be doing with this story, okay? Now, but I want to share a story with you. It's from the Bible. So, Pastor Bernard, if you go to the next um, two screens. Actually... One screen. This is good. Okay. Now I need your help. What scary situation would you be willing to face if you knew you would be okay? Now, I don't like heights. I'm scared of heights. But if I knew, okay, perfect. My husband knows I love the Matrix. Matrix is old school. Many young people don't know any idea about the Matrix. Right? They wonder what is that. The older people, do you know what the Matrix is, the movie? I love the Matrix for a lot of reasons, but the reason I love the Matrix is because of all the stuff that they can do, right, in this virtual world, amen? They can do, I'm not going to even try because I will probably go back and not come back up, but they, <laughs> they know what to do, the backward movements, and they can jump from building to building, and I'm thinking that I'm scared of heights. If I could jump or, or fly and not and be okay, would I do it? Yeah. If I could fly and be okay, would I do it? Yeah, of course. But I know I can't fly, and I won't be okay if I try, so I won't do it. So I want you guys to tell me, if you knew you could be okay, if you tried, if you knew that everything would be okay, if you tried, so what would you try if you knew you would be okay? Steal? No, oh, you don't want to try that one. <laughs> but at least you're honest. <laughs> you know, that's not a good one to try. Come on, use your imagination. Like I said, my, for me, it would be my matrix moves if I could do them. I love the matrix. What, what, what would you do if you had the power to do it and you know you would be okay? What in a dark road. Okay, all right. Something that you fear that will hurt you, will be okay, you would, you would challenge it. All right. Anybody else? Come on, older, older young people, you can tell me too. What would you do if you could do get away with something and uh, nothing bad I'm talking about? So something that maybe that you wouldn't try normally if you know you wouldn't be okay. What, Pastor? Flying too? <laughs> Flying? All right. <laughs> How about running a marathon? Anyone, everyone want to run a marathon? Oh, yeah. That never tried it because you know you wouldn't make it to the end? <laughs> no? Uh, I know I wouldn't. I know I wouldn't make Kimberly. How about you? Swing like Spider-Man from building to building. You would try that. All right. You dream about flying? Yeah, yeah. You got something, Sister Dawn? Hop? Oh, the trader hop from hop from car to car. How about speeding past traffic? Now, yeah, well, maybe running or maybe a car. Remember, for the, I'm, I'm just going to tell you how old I am. Night Rider. I'm really old, right? <laughs> Night Rider. Remember, Kit, the car, could fly. What if your car could fly over traffic? Would you want to do something like that? Okay, people that don't drive don't care. But drivers care. Because sometimes traffic can be, an, can be a lot. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you again. Good to see you. All right, so, Yeah. If you had the power or could do something, anything that normally would be scary for you, but you would do it because you knew you would be okay, you would probably do it. So the story I'm going to share with you guys is similar to that. 
So there is this man called Apostle Paul. He wasn't um, always an apostle. He was a man that didn't love God, was against the things of God, and the Lord turned him around and made him into a, a man that loved the Lord. So next screen, um, Pastor Bernard. So past, um, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul had an experience. And I'm going to talk to you guys very briefly about an experience he had. Again, we're talking about being calm and trusting God. Amen? So Paul encourages others in a storm and a shipwreck. <coughs> There are a couple of words. Next screen. There are a couple of words. I just want you guys to know real quickly. I'm going to go through them. All right. Next screen, please. Now, there are four, five, five words I want you to be aware of. The first word is Julius. Julius is, is a centurion um, military leader who was in charge of making sure that Paul got to this specific place. Next screen, please. There, the names of these people are there. Rome is a country where Paul was supposed to be sent to to meet with this guy named Caesar. Um, Paul was going to meet with Caesar because he would, according to the people, they didn't like the fact that Paul was evangelizing. He was speaking. He was encouraging others in Christ. So they wanted to imprison him for that. Can you imagine going to prison because you talk about God? Because you love God? That was what they were doing to Paul. So this guy named Julius was the guy in charge of making sure Paul got safely to Rome to meet with um, Ju Caesar to discuss him being imprisoned. Cargo, you guys hopefully know. Cargo is a place, uh, it says goods carried on a ship. Peril is danger. Shipwreck was is when a ship is completely destroyed, right? Either by sinking or breaking up. We're going to find out what happens to Paul. And then run aground is where a ship is running to the shore because, again, either a danger is going on and the ship has no other choice but to run to the shore of a beach. Next screen, please. Okay. I'm going to skip past the theme scripture and go straight to, th go straight to that. Okay, have you ever been in a boat before? I have, just around Hudson River, Hudson River. That was enough for me. <laughs> I don't like boats. I don't like going up and down. I don't like the bobbing feeling. I don't like water like that around me, but some of you might. But so, if you've been in a boat before and you liked it, it was a pleasant experience. Next screen. But if you've been in a boat where it wasn't pleasant, like you've seen the, the little animation there, where the plane or, or the boat or whatever is in a bad storm, right? I remember right after 9-11, um, our youth group at the time went on a trip to Jamaica. We were supposed to sing. I remember right after 9-11, I was, 9-11 was when the terrorists, when the World Trade Center. And we were I think it was that, was that September and October, we were supposed to travel to Jamaica for a convention. And I remember thinking, what are we doing on a plane after 9-11? <laughs> And only that, but there was a there was a bad weather, and I remember at one point the plane dipped. You know, the plane going like when the weather is bad, and it's got a little dip like you're in a pothole, but there's a pothole in the sky, right? So the plane dipped. My mother said, "Jesus, Lord, did I have to commit my spirit?" Because I literally thought that that was it. Because it's all the fear of what had happened with the plane, and here's a dip, and then the storm. I'm thinking this is it for us. So I'm like, I'm a, in my twenties, and I'm like, Lord, this is it for me. Because storms, when you're on a plane or in a boat, can make you feel like it could be the end. Because it's very scary. So there are two things. So there's the Paul, the Apostle Paul is on a boat, and the boat is going to Rome in a really bad storm. Next screen, okay? So <coughs> it says Paul was sent to prison again, I told you, because of his faith. He was ordered to appeal because they're going to put him in prison. So he was told, you go to Caesar and meet with them in Rome. You can appeal their decision to put you in prison, right? And so Paul decided, yes, I'm going to go. The last paragraph says they planned to sail along the Asian coast. And I'm going to show you the map where um, the journey was supposed to be. It says on the Asian coast, it says the weather for the journey was not, was not great as high winds and bad storms usually happen along the coast. So they're traveling to go visit Julius uh, to Caesar to talk about him being imprisoned. And they're going a route that's really not great. Remember, the theme is calm down, right? So there's a storm, and it's not a good route. Next screen. I'm just showing you the route that they were traveling, so we can skip that one just to save on time. All right. So you see that. Next screen, please. So we see that the Apostle Paul it says, early in the voyage, a storm started to develop. Paul knew the storm would get worse, so he told the centurion, that's the guy that was supposed to be in charge, um, sorry, the centurion in charge to find a safe harbor. He says, so Paul is like, listen, it's bad, let's stay, right? 
Unfortunately, the center is like, um, I'm not listening to you because I'm in charge and I want to do this journal whether you like it or not. So Paul had to go again. He's the guy in charge. He had to go. Next screen. As they made their way through the Mediterranean, the storm continued to get worse and worse. All right? The ship encountered violent storms and hurricane force winds. Fearing they would be shipwrecked, the captain orders the crew to throw cargo overboard. So they're on the ship and they're going, acting crazy, and the water is going. Remember, calm down is our thing, right? They're, are they calm right now? Would you be calm on this ship? No, no I wouldn't be. Like I told you, I was telling the Lord to receive my spirit, but it's going to dip in the plane, <laughs> right? If, this, if this, I was in this, I don't know what, I would, I'd probably throw myself overboard. I don't know. So, you know, they're not calm. To the point where they start throwing, they start throwing their cargo over because they're like, we're going to lighten the ship. And I, and I understand why they would not be calm in a situation like this, right? All right. Next screen. It says, for days on end, they sailed aimlessly. So this is not just a one, I think it went too far. It's not just a one moment. They were there, there for days, it says, aimlessly, battered by the winds and waves. There's, there's a long storm here. Never seen the sun or stars. Finally, they gave up all hope for survival. Paul again speaks to the centurion and the whole crew. Of course, he first allows himself, and he says, I told you so, right? Not to take this route. I told you not to do it, right? Would make sense. And he reminded them of his advice, but he goes on to encourage them. So Paul doesn't quite just stay, say, okay, you guys should listen to that one. He said, you know what? We made a bad decision, but... God has something else in store for us. Amen? God has something. And he goes on to tell them, this the screen that's in front of you right now. Then Paul says, And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. This is what he says to them. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. So pa Paul says, listen, don't, don't get discouraged. We're not going to die. Only thing that's going to be destroyed here is the ship, he says, right? For there stood by me, he said, by night, this night, an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sailed with thee. So pa the Lord, the angel said to him, Listen, not only will you be safe in this storm, but everybody who's with you in this ship are going to be safe too. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. This is what Paul is telling him. For I believe God... And it shall be even as it was told me. How be we must be cast upon a certain island. So Paul says, listen, you're going to be okay. But we're going to be thrown onto an island. Would you still be calm? Or would you be worried at this point? If Paul said to you, we're going to be fine. Would you be quiet? Would you be still? Would you trust God? Trust Paul? Maybe in this case, it was Paul. Would you trust Paul? If you're on this ship? So he's a prisoner while well, we listen to this guy. We're going we're gonna to hear their response in a minute, right? And my question is, what do you think Paul was saying to the man? I kind of said it to you guys, but what are they thinking when he's saying, listen, the angel came to me and told me that we're going to be okay, <laughs> right? Don't worry, we're going to be okay in this ship. That's going to happen to us. Ship might be destroyed, but we're going to be fine. So the men... Again, let's see what they have to say about what Paul said. Remember, at first when he told them not to do it, they didn't listen. Next screen, listen to this. After 14 days of ceaseless pounding, so they're on this ship for 14 days. The ship approaches land. And though the sailors do everything they can to avoid disaster, the ship is in a dangerous spot filled with rocks. So 14 days they're being battered, young people. And the sailors are not quite sure if Paul is going to be able, what Paul says is true. If you're in a situation, young people, and it feels like it's forever, right? Sometimes maybe some sweet issues in your family may seem like it's never going to get better. Maybe one's coming, sweetheart. And sometimes it may seem like maybe other things in school, sometimes there's a bully. I was talking to a parent yesterday, and she was sharing with me how her daughter was bullied because she just came to her school. Her daughter was bullied in a previous school. She was telling me what happened to her how she couldn't take it anymore, so she'd take her kid out of the school and bring them to where I was teaching. And I, I listened to the parent because I understood, I understand what it means to be, to feel like your your child is being targeted. Now, though my child, thank God, has never been bullied that I'm aware of, right? <laughs> but I know of children who have been bullied, right? 
and wha- how it affects them. So sometimes some things might be going on for a long time and it seems like you're not going to get out of it. That's like the situation. 14 days on a stuck on a ship that's being tossed and to and fro cannot be easy. Amen? But Paul said, don't worry, we're going to be okay. Go ahead, Jerry, what were you going to say? When he was driving, he was um, he, he it was a fire in his car, and then he he was okay, and then the, everything went on fire except for the Bible. Yes. Every page was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every page was okay. He doesn't want to say something in the mic. I, I got you. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I remember the mic was sacred when we were kids. Like, ooh, the mic. <laughs> like, we just had to say something. I get it. Anyway, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. So this, in this case, Paul, although he gave the warning to the people or the soldiers, the, 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 but there were soldiers too on the ship, they weren't quite sure. Says some sailors decided that they would get away from the ship by using a lifeboat. So some people said, I'm not waiting to die on this ship, so I'm jumping off. Remember, Paul told them, we're going to be okay. Stay on the ship. Don't jump off. Young people, you're going to be okay. All right? Stay where the Lord has you. See, wherever the Lord plant you in your church, stay there and let the Lord do his work in your life. I promise that you're going to be blessed in your life because you have the hand of God on you. Stay in the house of the Lord. Stay in the presence of the Lord. Don't get off the boat. No, in this case, literal boat, you told me not to get up, but I'm talking about figuratively stay in the presence of the Lord. Stay in the house of the Lord. Amen? So Paul tells them not to, but some of them wanted to. But the red part, I highlighted it, says, but Paul warned the centurion that they must all stay on the boat to be saved. Amen? Stay on the boat. Amen. Next screen. We're almost done. It says, you, you, um, sorry. After a night of peril, Paul gives the crew a final encouragement. Paul encouraged them to eat and to know that they will survive the night. So there's one more night that they're stuck, and he says to them, Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is, your, this is for your health, for there shall be an Sorry. For there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when you have thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in, in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And they were, sorry, and were, and sorry, we were all in the ship, 200, three scores, and 60 souls. And let's change it to numbers. So, Paul told them, eat, relax, stay what? Stay calm. We're going to be okay. Don't jump off the ship. Don't trust the Lord that he's going to keep his promise to you. Parents, this goes for you too. Adults, this goes for you. This is for the young people. This is for you too. Don't jump off the ship. Don't get nervous. God knows where you are. And he says to trust him today. Amen? All right. So let's, let's finish up the story. Um, go back one screen back, please. So, the ship runs aground, it says, on a sandbar and begins to break apart in the pounding surf, so they end up on land. All aboard swim towards the shore or grab whatever piece they could, and they were floating, or pretty much they were floating on the water on to, back to get back to the shore. Just as Paul had said, every soul on board that ship was saved. Amen? So, what's the big idea? What do you think the big idea of this story? What do you take from it? Anybody? Zoe, what do you take from it? Speaking speak into the mic because there are people on Zoom. So I took from this story that whatever you're going through in life, you must always stay calm and know that God is with you and he will direct you. And, yeah, that's it. How did the people in the ship stay alive? I think people stay alive because they were trusting God and they they just they trust God and they went through went through everything He said. Anybody else? What's the big idea? I 
I am not a slasher. How did they almost die, though? Storm, right? On a ship. And the storm, on the sh storm on the ship is not a good idea, but they survived because we said they listened to Paul's instruction. It was that they said stay. Paul says stay on the ship. So imagine if you if they had jumped off the ship, what would happen? There would be no lives that saved, right? So that tells me obedience, the Bible says it's better than sacrifice, all right? Amen. What do you take from this? So I love that. I said, don't if you jump off the ship, they would have been dead. Remember, they were. I didn't mention this part. They were bad rocks. The reason why I showed the map was because they were they were traveling along the coast, and it was very bad. So at one point, it says there were rocks in the ship itself, right? So. It's telling me that they jumped off the ship. They were jumping into what? Rocks. I don't think you want to jump into rocks, right? Because you'll be definitely dead. You have something to say? Basically, what I take for um, with this lesson to the youth, to the young, stay with God and he will stay with you. Basically, have faith, you know? Anything is possible. I believe a big idea has to do with um, Paul's obedience to the word of God. He believed the word of God, and he could use that belief to help save others too, right? Because the, the people had no choice except to jump. But what, what Paul said was important to them. So they stayed on board, and they were saved. I would say... Uh, you don't lean on your own understanding. Now thy ways acknowledge him. Acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. Because if you lean on your own understanding, you're going to go wrong way. So when you trust in the Lord and obey, and what you heard is what you work with. And that's obedience. Also, one of the things also is that um, Paul knew Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And the people that were with him did not know Christ. Because, and they did not expect to believe Paul. Because since he is a prisoner going to go to jail, they, don't, they do not believe him. What he is saying, it is true. So therefore, the doubts and the fear fill them all so they wouldn't listen. All right. So here's what I want you guys to get. Next screen, um, Pastor Phillips. And then we're going to get into so, some questions and some activities, okay? So it says, the big idea is in the midst of the storm, we should cling to God's promises. We should not be like the world. We're going to need to stay, when I say stay calm in his promises, rest in his promises. When I say calm, I'm talking about resting. You know, there's a scripture that I, that's on the wall over there, one of my favorite scriptures says, be still and know that I am God. I think many times we're not still. We're all over the place. We think by doing, we're doing ourselves a favor. So now God wants us to be still. But be still and do what? And have the knowledge, like my friend Derek said, he knew that this was going to be okay. It's still okay because he saw it in an experiment, either on YouTube or he watched it. He knew this was going to be okay. It's kind of spilling now because I think this is leaking. All right, I got it. I plugged it back up. See? Th the key is keeping it plugged in. So the key for us is keeping ourselves plugged into God. That's how we keep ourselves together, by trusting his promises. Ultimately, this is not a story about a heroic Paul. It wasn't Paul was heroic. That's why they survived it. It's hard, it's hard. Though it's hard not to admire his steadfastness, it's not about him. It's about who? God, who will accomplish his purpose in us no matter what. Okay? So young people, if you love the Lord, say amen. One more time. If you love the Lord, say amen. He loves you guys too, okay? All right, a couple of review questions, and then we're going to get into an activity.
And I'm hoping I get as many young people involved as possible. Okay, so next screen, please. So here's some, well, one more screen, go a little faster. Um, w one more, thank you. So everyone knew, so here's a question to, to who, let's see if you guys remember. Everyone on board the ship knew that their voyage would end in what? Before Paul spoke, they knew the voyage was gonna end in what? That's it. Disaster. Demise, yes. Anything else. They knew that they're, they're in for the end. Next screen. They knew that it was going to end in shipwreck. If you're in a storm, in a storm for 14 days, technically you're supposed to be ending in a bad way, which is death. What did the angel tell Paul? You're going to be okay? You're going to be okay. Awesome. She said not only would Paul be okay, but everyone in the ship would also be okay. And that's good to know when you're in a ship that's about to be shipwrecked, right? You want to know that not just the captain going to survive, but everybody with the captain will survive. Paul wasn't the captain, but he was told he would survive and everyone in that ship would survive. Next question. How many nights did the storm last? 14. I should have said um, nights. Okay. All right, any questions for anyone? Any comments? Uh, any more comments? All right, we're going to get up. We're going to do a word scramble game. And this is necessary not to do with Paul's story, but it's about three scriptures that I found in the Word of God. I thought we kind of see what we've been talking about, being calm. So on the walls, there are three posts, large poster papers, okay? And beneath each poster paper, there's a scripture. The trick is, not trick, I hate the word trick, okay. The goal, that sounds better, is to fill in the blank. So there's a scripture, but the scripture is missing words in it, okay? Now, I don't want to reveal the scriptures because I don't want people to start looking in their Bibles to find this. That's why I'm purposely <laughs> closing, not pulling it off yet, okay? But just trust me, there are scriptures that are written, and there are blanks in the scripture, so some missing details, okay? Your goal if you choose to accept it, is I want young, younger people to do it. Okay, so older, older young people, you can help the younger people. And you can use your Bible. It's the King James Version, okay? So don't use NIV because it's not going to quite match up. It's the King James Version, okay? So get a King James Bible or online King James Version of it. You're going to come up, I'm going to put you in teams, and you're going to try to fill in the blanks with the missing words. You will be given post-its. So on the blank spaces, you'll write the word that should go there stick it to the empty spaces, okay? Any questions? All right, you have three and a half minutes to do this, right? Yeah, I'm gonna see who wants to do it. So let's see who wants to be a part of this challenge. If you wanna be a part of the challenge, please come in front so I can put you in groups. And I'm hoping young people, come on, it's good to get up and move around, do something else. Do I kick Zoe, Zoe? So if you want to do the challenge, come in front. All right? It's not a lot. It's not too bad. Could be worse. All right. So this is the front right here. Somebody can see. Not behind me. In front. Okay? All right. Oh, you want to do the challenge too? All right. Yeah, of course. Welcome. Welcome again. And tell me your name one more time. Derek and Derek. This is your son. Derek Jr., right? All right. <laughs> I remember Derek, um, welcome back my friends. You know, we've been praying for you, amen? Praise the Lord, all right. So, uh, um, Daddy Derek and son, we'll put them on a team just to kind of do the team thing, okay? All you guys wanna be a part of it? All right, so I have three scriptures and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So three divided, 11 divided by three is, three divided by three is 
three and remainder two, right? So we're going to have those, the, the, people, the math people went, what? <laughs> yeah, so, oh, okay. All right. So four per scripture. All right. Do you guys want me to put you in a group or you want to put yourselves in groups of four? I need three groups of four. All right, so little, little Dirk. You want to build your stands? Okay. Actually, you four together? Perfect. All right, so. Right, no, no, don't run away. Don't run away. Don't run away. Come, my friends. Good to see you guys again. All right. You don't want to do it? Change your mind? All right. You're going to be okay. So, Kalijah, you want to take these? Go, go with Kalijah. You four ladies over there. You guys can go over where the cross is. And one, two, over here. You're going to be over here. Okay, the bye, sister dog. You guys go over by grandma. So we need one more person to fill in for Malachi. Come on. Um, Bernard, could you, Pastor Bernard, could you play, um, I did a Jeopardy theme. Can we get Jeopardy theme online, Pastor Bernard? <laughs> it, it will be used. It's there are three scriptures and there are three teams. So you guys are going to be doing this in that one, okay? Let's need one more person. Are you going to work with them? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let me review what you're doing, okay? So in a, in a minute, I'm going to ask you guys to uncover, reveal the scripture. The scripture verse is written there too. Your job is to come get post-its and write in the missing parts of the scripture. Right? I have enough post-its for each group, and I have enough mark, um, markers on top here. You can write them in. And you have three and a half minutes to do it, okay? All right. Um, I was going to have them come and try to, I'm trying to buy time here, <laughs> waste some of the time, <laughs> but it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to waste some of the time, have them come get stuff, <laughs> but it's okay. All right. So markers, you guys need markers. Oh, everybody have markers? You guys don't have markers, right? Here. And I need a post-it. All right. Give them a post-it too. You guys are good over there? You good? All right. All right. So everybody got post-its and markers. And one and three, you go. One, two, three, go. Take the scripture, the cover off the scripture. It's three groups. All right, go ahead. Oh, you guys, you're right here. You're right here. Your scripture is right there.
You guys were done first, right? Because I remember, yeah, I wasn't sure if you were rereading it. So they were done first, but first, the hopefully first means correct, right? Yes, the scriptures got to be correct, right? All right, let's see. There, um, Derek, you want to have somebody, re you want to read it? And let's, let's read it through to make sure it's good. Everybody's going to read their scripture, by the way. Go ahead. Matthew 6, verses 31 through 32. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or we shall, what shall we drink? For your heavenly Father knows that you need after these things. Matthew 6, verse 31 through 32. Good. Your heavenly Father knows that you need these things, so don't worry. Amen? You guys, over here, read your scripture too. Um, our scripture is Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. Yeah, everybody thinks. Philippians 4, verse 6. 4, verse 6. What? Philippians 4, verse 6 through 7. Um, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God and the peace of God will keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus thank you you just want to say something to Mike I get it thank you all so so much give them a round of applause Good job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, you guys can have a seat for a few minutes, okay? Then we're going to move on to the next thing. So I'm pretty much done with my, my discussion with you guys. And I want to thank you, thank you all for participating. I do have one more. My son told me not to do it, but I'm going to, if you guys want to do this, I can have, have a scavenger hunt. If you guys want to do a scavenger hunt game. Um, but in terms of the lesson part of it, yes, this thing is done. What, I, what do I want you to take from today before you leave? I'm going to ask, I'm not sure if Pastor Forrest wants to say anything. I'm going to see, maybe you can step up for a minute. So what I want you to take from it is to what? To stay calm and trust the Lord, okay? And have faith in him. Don't, don't worry and don't be afraid, okay? He says, be anxious for nothing but in everything. With thanksgiving, what? We give, make our supplication be known unto God, okay? So trust the Lord with everything and trust him because he's got, just like he got Paul and those men on that ship, he's got you guys too, okay? All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, we can do one more song. And if you're interested in doing the scavenger hunt, watch your eyes, watch your eyes, what they see. You guys know that one? All right. Sister Miss Sarks, you know that one? Oh, Sunday school, right? <laughs> Young people wonder, what in the world they're singing? <laughs> Watch your eyes. Okay, somebody got to help me with that one because I don't remember it too well. Who, who want to come sing it with, for me? Give me a break from saying. You don't know the song. Anybody know? Says Miss Sarks, want to come sing it? No? <laughs> 
it done? Um, no one wants to sing it with me or for me? You gotta know the song though, boys, okay? All right, Sister John is coming. Good, all right. Give, give, give my voice off, off the mic for a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm gonna sing around you. <laughs> wash your eyes, watch your eyes, what they see. Watch your eyes, watch your eyes, what they see. But there's a father up above looking down in tender love. Watch your eyes, watch your eyes, what they see. Watch your ears, watch your ears, what they hear. Watch your ears, watch your ears, what they hear. But there's a father up above looking down in tender love. Watch your ears, watch your ears, what they hear. Watch your lips, watch your lips, what they say. Watch your lips, watch your lips, what they say. But there's a father up above, looking down in tender love. Watch your lips, watch your lips, what they say. Wash your hands, wash your hands, what they do. Your feet where they go. Watch your feet, watch your feet where they go. For there's a father up above looking down in tender love. Watch your feet, watch your feet where they go. So your ears, your lips, your hands and feet. Watch your eyes, your ears, your lips, your hands and feet. For there's a father up above looking down. Watch your eyes, your ears, your lips, your hands and feet. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When it says, when the Bible, when the song says, watch your eyes, it means that the things that you look at, because your eyes belong to the Lord. Watch your ears, the things you hear, you listen to. Watch your lips, what you speak. Because your lips belong to the Lord. Your hands, what you do, because they belong to the Lord. And your feet, where it goes, because it belongs to the Lord. The entire you belong to the Lord. Thank you, Sister Janet. We're going to, I'm not sure if Pastor Forrest wants to say anything before we close. But I just, if you come, Pastor, you can come. I just want to also, you know, invite you, if you don't know the Lord, as your savior, this is always a chance. We're going to invite you to come to the front, to the altar, where we can pray for you and, and pray the, the sinner's prayer over your life. If you want to commit your life to the Lord, um, this is the time where we're going to encourage you to come to God. Amen. Um, we just signed the Lord wants your eyes, your ears, your lips, your hands and feet. He wants all of you. And he will, he will be your God if you will accept him in your heart. Amen. So our pastor is coming. He's going to just pray for you and then um, say something and pray for us, okay? And then we can go to the next thing, which is our fellowship time. Amen. Okay, boys and boys, please sit down for a second. All right, let me just, first of all, I'm so delighted, happy, happy to see all you young ones. And... Um, are in the right place, right time, and the word of God says, how can a young man cleanse his ways? But by what? Taking heed to the word of God. Take heed to the word of the Lord. And uh, I want to pray for you, but I want to just say, I remember as a maybe as young as you, all right? My parents always teach us the things, the word of God. And when I think, when I have the things that I remember vividly from my mom, she always tell us how to honor our mother 
and fathers. He said that your days may be long. And it's so funny that I thought of it over these many years as a lad, young man, and even now I'm get, getting old. But I never forget. It was always my desire is that I want to live long. And that word stick in my mind. If I honor my mother and my father, then my days will be long. And now, can somebody just guess? One of you younger ones, tell me how old I am. I look to you. Jaden, you may have known. All right? Somebody else? Yes. Empty. Sounds good, right? <laughs> sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Now I am this. Very soon I will be 75 years old. 75. Very soon. A few more months. A couple more months. So. And what I was thinking not too long ago, that I had great respect for my parents. None of them, my father, my mom, they could not say we were children who disobeyed them. We learned to honor our parents. And I trust you boys, girls, you will do the same. And mom and dad, you have, you have got a responsibility. Um, I so appreciate that young man. Your name again? Derek. I really do. When I see walks along to help his younger ones, I love that. And so this is the way we train our children, our child. The Bible said we should train them in the way that they should go, grow, go. That when they get when they get older, it's a fact. Mom. You've got to train your child. I always think that mom and dad, you should get the Bible out. And they, you don't have to teach them everything because they will not learn everything that there is in the Bible. But there's always a little word that's so simple. You can say, read this with me. Ah, let's pray over this word. And you are training them to love the Lord and to love you as mom and dad and to love others. And they will grow in the wisdom of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Nice to have you. And mom and dad. And loved ones. Every one of you. Who have come with them. Guardian. God bless you. And let us grow in grace. And in the knowledge of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So shall we just pray. At this time. Eternal Father. I thank you for this very moment. Lord, we know the responsibility that placed upon us as leaders to train every person that we have come across about you, who is our eternal God, our Savior and friend, our only help even in time of trouble. Lord, we thank you for this very moment that we spent here in your presence. And Lord, we know that you are rejoicing. You are there looking down. And you are satisfied that we have come to this realization there is none else, no one else except you. And God gave us the wisdom as parents. Even those who are not saved, even in this very segment this evening, this service, that Lord, the Holy Spirit of God, will in, in ignite them. Lord, ignite their spirits, that they will draw to you, to love you, to appreciate you. God, they may not realize how much you care for them. Lord, you're guiding us day by day. Our steps, sometimes we don't realize our steps are ordered by the Lord. We know that the devil wants to kill us. We 
wherever we may go, wherever we may be, the desire of the devil is to destroy our lives. But God, we thank you watching over us. You care for us. And so we are grateful to you. Bless each and every child in this place, every one of us. Oh God, Lord, guide their steps. Lord, just allow them to know that you love them and you are walking with them. I thank you again. Thank you for our missionary, Bethany, as God, she was able to impart to these or to us all that which you wanted us to hear. We give you praise, we give you thanks, and we just want to say amen to you. Everybody said amen. amen. Clap your hand for the Lord. Hallelujah. So again, thank you for coming. And don't stay away from the house of the Lord. That's where you grow. Don't stop reading the Bible. You don't have to know everything in the Bible. But you can even start from the book of Psalms. There are some simple words that you can understand in the book of Psalms. You will learn to honor God. And he will bring you out. If I have time, I will tell you where I'm coming from. But my steps were ordered by the Lord. And I'm thankful today. Amen. God bless you. And so tomorrow is Sunday. We invite you back. It would be so nice. If you could just deny. When the Bible speaks about denial. Although we have so many things to do. But you will. In appreciation to what God. Who God is to you.